Okay, so what I'm doing today is uh, I got the uh, <clears throat> need to bleed the brakes on my Toyota Tundra. Recently, just uh, swapped them out. I uh, put new uh, front calipers, pads, everything on them, and replaced the shoes in the back. And I uh, don't have a one-man brake bleeding kit, and a lot of them are vacuum related. And that, since I'm a uh, HVAC mechanic, I already got a vacuum pump. So I just need to create basically a vacuum chamber that will attach to uh, the uh, bleeder hoses or the bleeder nipple on the brake. So it happens to be this hose works perfect. And what it is, it's a uh, 3 8 outside diameter by a quarter inch uh, inside diameter. And uh, we basically need one to kind of come in here as a dip tube. And then another one just coming off the top right here and then on the one end of the hose I'm gonna put this uh, this fitting and it just kind of squeezes in there and that's uh, this is a flare fitting and this will fit on my uh, refrigeration vacuum pump hose so that's uh, what I'm gonna be using for that and so I need to put a couple holes in here with the drill like I said this is a 3 8 outside diameter but you're always taking a risk if you're doing a 3 8 hole, whether or not it will fit. It be too big. It's a 3 8 bit. So I'm going to start off a little smaller. I'm going to do a 2364 bit. And punch a couple holes in this. Now, this is just a regular glass uh, mason jar, the Classico uh, sauce spaghetti sauce if you got something with like a plastic lid I was trying to find we had like a peanut butter jar that would have been perfect nice thicker plastic but the metal I just got to make it a smaller hole so I get a nice tight fit for the vacuum on there so I'm gonna punch a couple holes in that using the drill try something else I'll grab another one of these lids and we'll try just doing a punch on it see if that does it obviously drilling does not work okay so I got another uh, lid last one so hopefully we get to work what I'm gonna do this time is I got uh, basically a big crow pry bar a nice tapered tip to it and I'll probably just punch this in but I don't want it to do too much damage and create too big a hole to start with. So I'm going to take just one of these uh, center punches and start with that. I know that would split right through. And you can just use a nail for that too. And see how that kind of did that. Do the same thing on the other side. And then I just want to work this in there a little bit. And we'll see if we can go back and forth real. Punch that. See where we're at there. Just that little bit, we're pretty close. Didn't really make a real round. Kind of squared it off for some reason. So Taper that in there just a little bit more. Get that in there. There it goes. That should give us a pretty good seal. We'll find out here in a little bit. I got that one. through. 
I just want to kind of get that where it sits at the bottom. So that's, that's pretty close there. Cut a length of that off. And so it's going to be connecting uh, to the brake hose itself. The other one we don't need a really long, long piece or not. It's the one we're going to be using for that. And we can actually just leave that the way it is because it's not going to be actually getting any uh, holes in it. So take this off so I don't uh, probably use anything round that will kind of work for this. Seems to be working. There we go. With that one, I'm just gonna keep that top because we don't basically when it's in the vacuum, we don't want it to suck up any of our brake fluid. it on. Just do a functional test by sucking on on this end and closing this up and we'll see how much it, air it draws in here. I don't know if you can see the lid pulling in on that or not. So it's leaking by a little bit here on the sides. Okay so it does have a little bit of uh, leaking coming by, a little piece of modeling clay. And uh, if, you're kid, if you got kids and you got some play dough, that would work too. I keep some of this modeling clay around for uh, holding different things and I think they'll always find a use for it at some point. So I'm just going to seal around the, the edges with some of this. Got it heated up here. Got a little cold. Sitting outside. Let's see what kind of nice tight fit we'll get on there. It doesn't have to be pretty. <laughs> Do the other one. Okay, now let's try it. Now oh, it's great. Now it's nice and tight. Not getting any leakage by. Yeah, it's holding, it's holding now, so. Okay, so now we got that done, and we're going to go out and hook this up and, uh, and test it out with reading the, reading, reading the bleeding the brakes. Okay, so what we got here is uh, got my uh, brake calipers here, into the brakes, these are on the front, and I got my bleeder screw on the top here, I already got the hose connected up, and it goes down. You see this one, this is the dip tube one that goes down below. And then our other hose is connected to our uh, manifold gauges and our vacuum pump. That's a vacuum pump. So when I turn this on, open my my uh, gauges up, I'll be able to pull a vacuum in here, which will then, I'll be able to unscrew that screw and it will suck the brake fluid in and uh, any bubbles, if there is any. And we'll be able to replace the uh, fluid in the line make sure there's no air bubbles and I already did a manual bleed but this is kind of a more advanced to be able to see if there's any more in there and uh, so I'll get everything turned on here and uh, we'll get it operational and so I got the vacuum pump on and uh, you see on the top here when I pull this open up my manifold 
sucking that in and pulling that on a good vacuum. So we get you set up here and so what I'm gonna do is just to open this up. It's kind of it's kind of foamy coming out there. Now it will suck air from around this fitting, and you can kind of. Here you can kind of see it pulsing through. We'll just keep it. There and I just want to make sure that the uh, the reservoir keeps topped off that we don't suck it down below the intake and pull in more bubbles. I don't see any big bubbles. Usually this like kind of foamy stuff is from uh, around here. You can put like some Teflon tape around there, or even that clay, and that'll help suck that up. But it's looking pretty good. Well, I got here some more of the clay. I thought I'd uh, see if that would make a difference. And then the other thing I'm going to do after I get this clay on is to uh, get inside and pump the brakes. It's the sl slow fluid motion. So we'll see if this. Uh, Seals up any more of the it's kind of stopped a lot of that foaming. That looks like I got quite a bit more out. So what I did is I pumped it three times real slow. On the third time down, I actually had a stick that's cut where the stick holds the pedal down at the uh, at the bottom. That's so what I'm gonna do is come back in here and pull this clay back off. Seemed to help a little bit. I don't know if it's really worth it or not but got this one bled pretty good I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this up then I'm gonna go pump the brakes again and then come back and loosen it up with the vacuum on it
Okay, I'm going to call that good and go do the other uh, three brakes and then there's two other locations where I need to bleed off and that'll take care of this bleeding.